So I've basically been dealing with bullshit all day. This is probably going to be short. I'd like it to be short. Because I've got too much to do still. And the day isn't even done yet. So, with that in mind, let's jump right into Democrats being tyrants and acting like Republicans again. Um, I want to take y'all back a couple years. Uh, and I want to read from a USA Today article. Um... Uh, trauma surgeons and coroners will tell you the high-velocity bullet fired from a military-style semi-automatic assault weapon moves almost three times as fast as a 9mm handgun bullet, delivering far more energy. The bullets create cavities through the victim, wrecking a wider swath of tissue, organs, and blood vessels. And a low recoil weapon with a higher capacity magazine means more of these deadlier bullets can be fired accurately and quickly without reloading. An assault weapon, then, is a handheld weapon of war, capable of spraying a crowd with more lethal fire in seconds. This article is clearly written by somebody who does not understand guns and who maybe should talk to somebody who does rather than nurses maybe physicists if you're going to talk about energy um so i'm going to read a little bit more Reinstating the federal assault weapons ban that was in effect from 94 to 2004 would prohibit manufacture and sales, but it would not affect weapons already possessed. This would leave millions of assault weapons in our communities for decades to come. Instead, we should ban possession of military-style semi-automatic assault weapons. We should buy back such weapons from all who choose to abide by the law. And we should criminally prosecute any who choose to defy it by keeping their weapons. The ban would not apply to law enforcement agencies or shooting clubs. <sighs> Little bit more here. Our courts haven't found a constitutional right to have assault weapons anyway. When the Supreme Court held in 08 that the Second Amendment protects an individual right to possess a firearm, Justice Antonin Scalia wrote that this right, quote, is not unlimited, end quote, and is, quote, not a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever in any manner whatsoever and for whatever purpose, end quote. Since that District of Columbia v. Heller decision, four federal appeals courts have upheld assault weapons bans. Many other firearms are available for self-protection, they found, and the danger that assault weapons pose to society is a legitimate reason for states and localities to ban them. So, I want you to keep that in mind. Because Biden is saying relatively the exact same thing. And his... First off, let me just say, um, it's fucking hilarious that the people, uh, the, the, the Democrats who, who always used to mock Bush for fumbling his words and sounding old and detached aren't doing the same thing to Biden. Because when, when it clicked in my head that Biden literally, and I'm not like even being exaggerative here, sounds exactly like George W. Bush, uh, it, it just it sent this wave of irritation over me that he's not getting the same treatment that George W. Bush got. Because it should. He should. Um, Bush spoke how Biden speaks. And when Bush speaks, it's how Biden speaks every time he speaks. And, and Biden constantly forgets, like, 
halfway through what he's talking about and says things like, you know the thing. And it happened yet again today and what I'm going to talk about. I just, I figure that the pretext is a good thing to bring up. The Eric Swalwell pretext. Eric Swalwell wrote that article. It's called, Ban Assault Weapons, Buy Them Back, Go After Resistors. And the byline says, Ban Assault Weapons and Buy Them Back. It might cost $15 billion, but we can afford it. Consider it an investment in our most important right, the right to live. Aw. So, let me just get to this before anything else and say that assault weapons don't exist. They really fucking don't. Uh, there is no weapon that is more assaulty than another, and there is no factually provable threshold at which a weapon becomes an assault weapon. The only reason people use that term is because it's an Americanized version of Sturmgewehr. You know what Sturmgewehr was? It was the German advertising for a gun built for Nazis. They made a gun, like, the first, like, automatic gun, fully automatic gun, and, and, <laughs> they called it the Sturmgewehr, meaning storm rifle. And then, because of that, Americans made similar guns and said, these are assault rifles now. It's literally Nazi propaganda, and it's used to disarm people. Maybe stop using Nazi propaganda to disarm people if you're going to allege to be on the side against fascists. Just a little bit of something to think about. Now, to the crux of the issue. Biden today said the same shit. It didn't matter so much that a representative was bloviating for a bit. But now that the president of the U.S. is basically saying the same stuff, talking about how nobody ever said you could have whatever weapon you wanted, and and then coming out with this next line, which I will say shortly, um, the, the, the whole pretext is that he's the president. Biden is the president, and Swalwell wasn't. So it's worse now. It's not as good as it was. So, just to be super extremely specific, uh, what he said was, if you want to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. My tweet about it says, he said this as part of an excuse to further disarm the American people. He's essentially threatening war, up to nuking us. I'm going to repeat that. He's essentially threatening war, up to nuking us. Still think he's on your side, libs? And I found this in this hashtag, so I used it. Um, it's kind of clever. Hands up, don't nuke. And I already have some like people under this tweet who are mad mad online about it and fucking the the deliciously named my porn account or at my porn a three eight. 103001 uh damn don't tear a muscle reaching like that yeah 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 i'm reaching all right i want to ask what does it imply when people say the same thing as the previous people because what swalwell did just to give you the rest of the context, was he eventually got into this uh, altercation online with somebody and then finished it off by saying, um, you can't beat us because we have nukes. Which implies that those nukes will be used on the American people if there's an uprising. Don't you, though? So, Biden is saying the same thing here. It means the same thing. 
And what it's saying is that if you don't dis disarm yourself, hand us over your guns, we will fucking nuke you. Because that's what you would need to do. That's what you would need to defeat in order to defeat our empire. You would need our nukes too. You would need our fighter jets. You would need our capabilities if you were going to take us on. And what that means is that they would use every single capability they had up to and including nukes. Because otherwise it wouldn't be valuable to bring up. You know, otherwise they wouldn't say we would need that. Because we wouldn't need that. You know, it seems relatively obvious to me. I don't know about you. <sighs> You know, this is just another example of how the Constitution ain't shit. There's a thing in the Constitution that says, in the, in the Bill of Rights to the Constitution, rights, which are really more privileges, that says that you have the right to be secure in your person's papers and effects. Effects includes money. Which means that that Bill of Rights should have precluded... Uh, coercive taxation compulsory taxation it should have fucking precluded that but didn't for some reason and I think we know the reason the reason is because that bill of rights was never about the government even though it was about the government it was about keeping the people placated with the idea of small government while they grew it into a behemoth. Because the smallest governments always grow into the biggest ones. Biden is a symptom of that, you know? <laughs> Get vaccinated or wear a mask. That's your choice. It's it's your choice. Um, Biden said something very similar to or exactly that. Um, these people think they can give you choices and you can only act within their limited behavioral matrix. That's it. And when you ask them what they're going to do about it, if you decide to rebel, revolt, take your life back, they say, we've got the nukes. There's a song by Dennis Leary. <laughs> called asshole and once i bring up the lyrics i want to read you some of the lyrics here because i think it kind of applies here um <laughs> it's it's fucking <sighs> you know what i'm gonna do I'm going to get myself a 1967 Cadillac Eldorado convertible, hot pink with whale skin hubcaps, an all leather cow interior, and big brown baby sea lies for headlights. And I'm going to drive that baby at 115 miles per hour, getting, on, uh, getting one mile per gallon, sucking down quarter pounder cheeseburgers from McDonald's in the old fashioned non biodegradable styrofoam containers. And when I'm done sucking down those grease ball burgers, I'm going to wipe my mouth with the American flag. And then I'm going to toss the styrofoam containers right out the side. And there ain't a goddamn thing anybody can do about it. You know why? Because we've got the bomb. That's why. Two words. Nuclear fucking weapons, okay? Russia, Germany, Romania, they can have all the democracy they want. They can have a big democracy cakewalk right through the middle of Tiananmen Square. And it won't make a lick of difference because we got the bombs, okay? John Wayne's not dead, he's frozen. As soon as we find a cure for cancer, we're going to throw out the Duke, and he's going to be pretty pissed off. You know why? If you've ever taken a cold shower, we'll multiply the... Okay, just, I, I could go on for fucking... It's funny. I like it because it's funny. And because it really kind of just tells you how the American attitude has developed. Biden doesn't have to rule with reason, dignity. He doesn't have to care about your rights. He doesn't have to care about the constitutionality of what he's doing because the Constitution has either enabled such a government as we have or has been powerless to prevent it. Either way, it is unfit to exist. Lysander Spooner was so based and very ahead of his time. 
he doesn't have to care about it because he's never been beholden to it to begin with. Illegal wars and illegal prison industrial complexes, uh, at least according to the rights we should we should all have, um, <laughs> those are his bread and butter. He's a fucking conservative that got Democrat votes because he wasn't Trump. Hmm? So now, he is threatening the military-industrial complex on the citizens of the fucking country. He is threatening nukes as a consequence for breaking laws. You know, I constantly say this, that one of my primary issues with government uh, is that it doesn't matter how much we fight, how long we struggle, uh, what connections we make, what applications we develop, it doesn't matter what communities we have, what social structures we build, what environments we create. Because things like nukes are like swords of Damocles hanging over our head and will fucking kill us if the U.S. government wants to. It's like the wall, sorry, fence, that Ron Paul warned about. He said that it's not designed to keep people out, it's designed to keep us in. And these nukes are not designed to defend the nation, but to offend the nation. They are the ultimate price to be paid for civil and non-civil disobedience. Because ultimately, yes, there are a lot of them, but nukes take out a huge chunk of people at once. And if they can work the deterrence effect and give a significant warning to the powers that should not be so that they can get every other country to not do mutually assured destruction, if there was a coordinated global effort to prevent that from happening, then you could quell an uprising right fucking quick all over the fucking world just by proving that you're the insane person who's willing to nuke their own fucking people. But, uh, yeah, I'm the crazy one, though. Um, you know, because... They can't disprove what I'm saying. I get called crazy a lot for thinking this sort of thing. I, I've already got my porn account telling me that I'm reaching. I, I, I don't know how I'm going to live with myself knowing that my porn account doesn't like me. I'm fucking broken up, guys. I, I don't know if I can move on. Um, see, the thing is, I, I know that people think that the, that the state has some shred of human decency. But they've already bombed their own people in the past. I can't bring it e up enough, the Philadelphia move bombing. I can't bring it up enough. And I can't bring up enough the fact that the U.S. government has also released radiation in places released biological contaminants in places, tested noise weapons on people, tested <sighs> so many things. And people think that this isn't going to happen again. Tuskegee syphilis experiment, anyone? You think because your skin color is different, you're going to be exempt? You're just meat. Everybody's just meat to these people. Just flesh to be experimented on. Flesh to be used for the greater state apparatus is good. And then discarded when inconvenient or threatening to their power. That's it. That's why they're killing a thousand of us a year by gunfire alone. And that's why they don't report this kind of thing themselves. That's why you still need to go to the Washington Post to get this information. Because they're tracking it. 
But the U.S. government wouldn't do that. They don't want people to know how bad it is. And the Washington Post isn't even tracking all the non-gun deaths. No Eric Garners. No George Floyds. No Kelly Thomases. Just the people they shot to death and it's a thousand a year. Because they do not give a fuck about you. And the fact that Biden is in does not change that. It makes it worse because no president is ever going to shrink the state and it's not going to stay the same. They put money into getting these people where they are. So the state's going to grow. It's a necessarily an intrinsically parasitic imperial organization that relies on spreading and growing, not ever shrinking. It's not going to let people in who want it shrunk. At least not at any level where they'd have any ability to fucking shrink it. So Biden is going to make it worse, and whoever is after Biden is going to make it worse. Are you seeing this now? I hope so. Because I am tired of every single election cycle having people who allegedly want change throw it all at a politician. It's like, it's like throwing your food in a urinal. Maybe you can still eat it. Maybe you'll get AIDS. Can we not? I just... So, the next president's going to be worse. And the next president's going to be worse. And the next president's going to be worse. So, what do we do about that? We throw our time at better pursuits. That's what. We don't campaign for presidents. We don't get representatives, which is an incredibly stupid concept. Nobody can represent you better than yourself. And if you think they can, it's because you're spineless and weak. So get the power you want for yourself. Seize your own power and stop letting them steal it from you. It's yours. I, I'm, I'm, that's the thing. I know you want power because you think that you're going to get the system to do what you want as long as you play nice and use the magic words. But that ain't how this plays, yo. And even if it is in your decidedly limited experience, guess the fuck what? You don't mean a damn thing statistically. And the state's still going to grow even if it looks slightly better for you and yours. So, agorism, mutualism, anarcho-anything, not minarchy, not authoritarianism. Those will never get truly liberty-minded individuals what they want. Ever. And I gotta tell you, I had an embarrassing amount of uh, libertarians telling me to vote for Biden last track. An embarrassing amount because he already has his track record. That's the thing. Was Trump, he was a wild card, politically speaking. He seemed to wish-wash with the administrations. Take whatever position seemed popular at the time. Populism, maybe. Maybe that's why populism is a problem. Um, but Biden, he had a track record. And the running mate he chose had a track record. And this is who they chose. And this is who a significant amount of anti-Trump libertarians 
wanted me to go with. Well, you fucking happy now? I'm not. I, I'm never happy because I want freedom. And this system is not giving it to me. And opposing the system constantly gets me shat on from all sides. But I don't actually care at this point. I'm in it to win it. And by win it, I mean slowly lose my sanity and my grip on the world. Because ultimately, that's what's happening. I'm going down the tracks. I'm absolutely off the rails. Everything is fucking amazingly distinct and awesomely blurry at the same time. Why is this not obvious to people? Well, because they're still stuck in that indoctrination matrix. So we need to reverse millennia of social engineering. We need to reverse the way that the infrastructure has been set up as a result of that social engineering. We need to fundamentally uproot the way society works and restructure it from the ground up so that it functions in an ethical and libertarian way. And we're probably not going to fucking do that. Woo! We did it. We failed before we started. Or we could start on our own seize our own personal power not let the fuckers take it from us no matter what fucking language they want to use <laughs> and if we become a success story we win by default because more and more people are going to realize that it's possible and do it themselves Biden is only your controller if you let him be so what do you say? Are you going to let him be your controller or are you going to smash the state? <laughs>